in the next series of podcasts, if you will. We're going to go over the secured party creditor process documents specifically to get people more acclimated to the documents and have a better understanding of their contents and what they represent. We're going to start with the hold harmless and indemnity agreement simply because it's a document, one of the only documents that you will include with your chargeback. You may have read it. You may not have read it. Today, you're going to hear it. This hold harmless and indemnity agreement is mutually agreed upon and entered into on this 13th day of July, 2023. And any and all derivatives and variations in spelling of said name hereafter, excuse me, I skipped the whole line, between the juristic person, Johnny Justice Strawman, and any and all derivatives and variations in spelling of said name here and after jointly and severally debtor, except Johnny Justice Strawman, copyright. The living, breathing, flesh and blood man known by the distinctive appellation of Johnny Justice Strawman copyright. Herein, after creditor. For valuable consideration, debtor hereby expressly agrees in covenants without benefit of discussion and without division that debtor holds harmless and undertakes the indemnification of the creditor from and against any and all claims, legal actions, orders, warrants, judgments, demands, liabilities, losses, depositions, summonses, lawsuits, costs, fines, liens, levies, penalties, damages, interests, and expenses whatsoever, both absolute and contingent, as are due and as might become due, now existing and as might hereafter arise, and as might be suffered or incurred by, as well as imposed on debtor for any reason, purpose, and cause whatsoever. Debtor does hereby and herewith expressly covenant and agree that creditor shall not under any circumstance, nor in any manner whatsoever, be considered an accommodation party, nor a surety for the debtor. Now, I'm sure that's pretty clear, but let's just <clears throat> consider a couple of things really quickly. Under no circumstances are you to be held liable for anything with respect to the municipalities and agencies of the Corporation United States. The straw man is specifically holding you harmless. Now let's look at the defined glossary of terms as used in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement. The following words and terms express the meanings set forth as follows. Non obstante, without exception, appellation, in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term appellation means a general term that introduces and specifies a particular term, which may be used in addressing, greeting, calling out for, and making appeals of a particular living, breathing, flesh and blood, man or woman. Conduit. In this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term conduit signifies and me a means of transmitting and distributing energy and the effects produce of labor such as goods and services via the name johnny justice straw man or if i'm actually saying it correctly on the paper it would be uh, straw man johnny justice also known by any and all derivatives and variations in the spelling of the said name of debtor except all derivatives and var var variations in the spelling of the name of johnny justice straw man copyrighted the creditor. Now, keep in mind, I'm sure you've heard me talk uh, about conduits and transmitting utilities in my videos many times. Uh, this is it. This is that point you're defining in the hold harmless right here in the glossary of terms what you mean. You're giving them due notice of what everything means. And in kind, you should know what everything means. It wouldn't do you an injustice to memorize every term you use in the glossary. For example, creditor. In this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term creditor means Johnny Justice straw man copyrighted and all derivatives and variations in the spelling of the name of Johnny Justice straw man copyrighted. The debtor, on the other hand, in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term debtor means straw man 
Johnny Justice, copyright, also known by any and all derivatives and variations in the spelling of the name, except Johnny Justice straw man copyright and all derivatives and variations in the spelling of the name of Johnny Justice straw man copyright. Creditor is defined, debtor is defined. Derivative, in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the word derivative means coming from another. It's derived from something, taking from something preceding, secondary, that which has not the origin in itself, but obtains existence from something foregoing and of a more primal and fundamental nature. Anything derived from another. Ends legis. L University, L Ministries, Ends Legis, a creature of law. This is one of the most important terms you will be using. And uh, you should be using the term Ends Legis many, many, many times a day. It's one of those terms, straw man, Ends Legis, debtor. You should know it, un overstand it, and be able, to, be able to say what it means. And in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term Ends Legis means a creature of the law, an artificial being such as a corporation or trust considered as deriving its existence entirely from the law, as contrasted with a natural person. Again, ens legis means a creature of the law. It's something that is not contemplated outside of the law. Hold harmless and indemnity agreement. In this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term hold harmless and indemnity agreement means the hold harmless and indemnity agreement number. For example, in this case, it would be HHIA, 07132023 as this hold harmless and indemnity agreement may be amended and modified in accordance with the agreement of the parties signing hereunder together with all attachments exhibits documents endorsements and schedules uh relating to this hold harmless and indemnity agreement and let me say that the number sequence that I just did I created on the spot for those of you I haven't given this uh, trade secret to yet, <laughs> if you will, um, it's very simple. I simply use the, it's an alphanumeric identifier. So I use the hold harmless and indemnity agreement, HHIA. And then the first sequence of numbers is going to be the date of significance. So today, since I'm telling you, that's why I went with 07132023. And then the three, a dash three. So it would be HHIA dash 07. One three two zero two three dash three because it's the third document in the sequence of uh, uh, paper uh, documents that you have in your set, which is five in total. So that's the unique identifier, and then in the agreement attached, just continuing forward, straw man Johnny Justice. Um, in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the um. Straw man justice Johnny copyright means straw man Johnny justice copyright and any and all derivatives and variations in the spelling of said name except Johnny justice straw man copyright and all derivatives and variations in the spelling of the name Johnny justice straw man copyright. And then again, you can either have a common law copyright or an international copyright. Uh, the copyright at the end of the day just needs to, you need to be sure that it's not um, a copyright, um, it's not copyrighted by the Library of Congress or in some other nation's uh, government because ultimately they would then own that copyright. And you will put in there whichever kind it is. So <clears throat> in the event it's an international copyright, or a common law copyright, you would identify that, the copyright year. So in this case, it would be 2023 um, by Johnny Justice Strawman copyrighted, all rights reserved. Now, the all rights reserved is very critical, especially with respect to the copyright if you're doing an international copyright. And the reason for that is that the Pan-American Treaty, specifically the ones that we utilize in our process, uh, stated that any written any uh, written property or intellectual property, I should say rather, that is committed to writing, any property that's committed to writing and is claimed using the designation all rights reserved, copyrights it in essence. Now, there are things that you can do to perfect the copyright better than that. But essentially, if you published a book today and you wrote inside the cover and said, uh, all rights reserved, this book is copyrighted 2023, all rights reserved under Pan-American Copyright Treaties, then that book would be 
uh, copyrighted. The um, the only thing that would the only thing the only caveat with that would be that if there was someone who had a copyright previous to that, then it could interfere. Not if it was the name, no. Just in general, if you were doing a book, but with the name, it wouldn't really interfere because it's still your nominal estate property. In other words, it's your name and it's part of your estate. So. Um, it, there, it would be highly unlikely that the, another person with your exact name that had done the process and had their name copyrighted would even exist to come against you to try to de determine whose copyright was uh, was older and more perfected. Um, it still wouldn't apply because the chances are you wouldn't be going into business with someone like that. And if you did, you would know that in advance. So barring those circumstances, it would be unlikely that any government or anything else could come through. It, it would be, I mean, I, I'm hesitant to ever say impossible, but that they could come with a, a, a perfected copyright that would overcome yours. So, and even in the case of a book as well, now if it wasn't your book and somebody else wrote the book and they copyrighted it with the Library of Congress or even under a Pan-American copyright and their date was older than yours, then you would lose in court if they saw you in court. So that would be, those are the only key ca caveats which are obviously um, almost irrelevant. So, uh, because your, your, your um, international copyright would stand almost guaranteed against anything. Again, books, stuff like that, it would be determined on whether or not it was actually yours. Oh, you know, Facebook or, or what is it? Uh, yeah, Facebook and, the, you know, the claim, the other guy that claimed that, you know, Mark Zuckerberg stole the idea from him. Well, at the end of the day, Mark Zuckerberg had the patents, he had the trademarks, whatever, the, you know, the copyrights. And that guy had no claim. It was the same situation with the Steve Jobs claiming that Microsoft was his invention that Bill Gates stole it from. At the end of the day, Bill Gates had the copyrights, the trademarks, the patents, and he had no claim. Uh, Steve Jobs had no claim to that. So anyway, not to do uh, very too far off topic or stray too far rather. Um, in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term Johnny Justice straw man copyright means the sentient living flesh and blood man or woman identified by the distinctive appellation Johnny Justice straw man copyright. All rights are reserved in relation to the use of Johnny Justice straw man copyright. And then you're gonna autograph that copyright with your credit sign, the year was done, if it was this year, then obviously it would be 2023. Now back to the terms, juristic person. Again, this is very important. These terms are very, very important. In this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term juristic person means an abstract legal entity. What is that? What is that? It's an ens legis. It's a creature of law, right? So in this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term juristic person means an abstract legal entity, ens legis, such as a corporation or trust created by construct of law, and considered as possessing certain legal rights and duties of a human being. An imaginary entity such as a debtor, that is straw man Johnny Justice copyright, which on the basis of legal reasoning is legally treated as a human being for the purpose of conducting, as in conduit, conducting commercial activity as in energy for the benefit of a biological living being such as a creditor. In other words, you. Let me stop for a minute and quote a case um, called Gracie versus Madden. It was decided in 1988. From the earliest times, the law has enforced rights and exacted liabilities by utilizing a corporate concept. By recognizing this, that is, juristic persons other than human beings. The theories by which this mode of legal operation has developed has been justified, qualified, and defined are the subject matter of a very sizable library. The historic roots of a particular society define uh, a society, economic pressures, philosophic notions, all have had their share in the law's response to the ways of men in carrying on their affairs through what is now the familiar device of the corporation. Attribution of legal rights and duties to a juristic person other than man is necessary is necessarily a metaphorical process and the nun the worse for it. No doubt, quote, metaphors in law are to be narrowly watched. As the New York Justice, uh, Cor uh, Justice Cordozo said in Berkey versus Third Avenue Railroad Company, quote, but all instruments of thought should be narrowly watched lest they be abused and fail in their service to reason, unquote. Now, if you're interested in reading case law, you might also see U.S. versus Scafani Corporation of America, 33 U.S. 795. Now, 
as far as copywriting the name, I did want to just give you one other quote from Gracie V. Madden, uh, which says, quote, observation. A person has a property right in the use of his or her name, which a person may transfer or assign, unquote. Again, nominal estate property. Your name is actual property. It's, it's intangible property, ultimately, but it is, it, which just means it's not physical, right? So ultimately, it is estate property. It's nominal estate property. Now, living, breathing, flesh and blood man. In this private agreement, the term, quote, living, breathing, flesh and blood man or woman means the creditor, Johnny Justice Strawman copyright. A sentient, living being, as distinguished from an artificial legal construct ends legis, that is, a juristic person created by construct of law. Non obstante, in this private agreement, the, the term non obstante means words anciently used in public and private instruments with the intent of precluding in advance any interpretation other than certain declared objects and purposes. Another case law for your edification. Quote, there every man there, every man is independent of all laws except those prescribed by nature. In other words, natural law. He is not bound by any institutions formed by his fellow men without his consent, unquote. That's Cruden versus Neal. That's C-R-U-D-E-N versus Neal, N-E-A-L-E. Second, North Carolina, 338, 1796. Sentient living being. In this private agreement, the term sentient living being means the creditor. That is Johnny Justice Strawman copyright of living, breathing, Flesh and blood man, as distinguished from an abstract legal construct such as an artificial entity, juristic corporation, partnership, trust, association, and the like. Yet another very key term, folks, transmitting utility. In this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term transmitting utility means a commercial transmitting utility. That is a conduit for all commercial presentments and matters passed to or presented to the debtor. That is straw man, Johnny Justice, copyright, UCC. In this hold harmless and indemnity agreement, the term UCC means uniform commercial code. This hold harmless and indemnity agreement number HHIA 0713-2023 dash three is dated the 13th day of july or rather the 13th day of the seventh month of the common era or in the year of our lord 2023 depending on how you want to do it some people do it the christian way some people do it the um what, what would you call it the uh scho the scholar way scholastic way i suppose scholars uh generally term uh the years as common era CE and before the common era BCE. So it would obviously just depend on your cup of tea. Now, after that is going to be the debtor. And then that's going to be straw man, Johnny justice for your last name. And then first name, middle name, copyright, and then the debtor signature. Okay. So it would be all caps, obviously. And then creditor accept under that creditor accepts debtor signature in accordance with UCC sections one, two, zero, one, three, nine, and three, four, zero, one B. And then the creditor, Johnny Justice Strawman, copyright. Under that, creditor signature, autograph, com uh, autograph, common law, copyright. Or if you have a international copyright, then you would say autograph, international copyright. Or it, it would actually even behoove you to say Pan American, specifically because the there's the Berne Convention as well um, uh, uh, across the across the pond, as they like to say. Um, that uh, is also as a copyrighted convention as well. So since we're doing ours under Pan American specifically, then it would actually behoove you because they would already know whoever the interested party is would already know that, uh, that it was an international copyright by the fact that it was Pan American. And then all rights reserved. Again, that crucial phrase, I would write all rights reserved on anything that was of importance to me as well as uh, UCC 1308, or at least the designation. This is a really popular one among people that are trying to simplify 
and that's ARR forward slash WOP. And what that means is all rights reserved without prejudice. The UCC says itself that under duress uh, without prejudice are interchangeable for the actual designation of the code UCC 308, 1308 rather. So if you say without prejudice, that's enough to, to, um, to invoke the rights um, gleaned under that code. So keep that in mind, ARR forward slash WOP. I kind of go overboard sometimes, I'll add them all, but I know I remember them and stuff like that. So it is what it is, uh, it just depends. But if you wanna simplify, and the key is just being able to say what it means if someone asks, if you if they say, what's that mean? And you say, all rights reserved without prejudice, then that's what it means and they'll take it at that. If you don't know what it means, then they'll say that, you know, you then they'll probably say that it's it, it bears no weight in the circumstance. Uh, under that's going to be your acknowledgement or verification. Sometimes I put verification there, sometimes acknowledge. Acknowledgement, it's interchangeable. You can use either. I probably, take it back now, I'm going to go through my documents and just make it all one or the other just for, you know, the sake of, uh, of keeping everything in, in uh, line with each other. But at the end of the day, the acknowledgement, the verification is, it's the, it's, uh, the perjury jurat, except under notary seal. So again, it, or in other words, it's it's your sworn testimony, but certified by a, an officer of the public, which a notary public is. On your, you'll see on our paperwork that we say public notary, and it's the difference between the democracy and the republic, or the private versus the public. And by putting that, it does matter when you are when you're able to, um, uh, just like with the hold harmless indemnity agreement you saw here us defining the terms in our agreement. So if we define the language of our contracts and we get to dictate what our contracts, what weight they have and what they mean, keep that always in mind. Our contracts should say public notary. Our contracts should say, uh, you know, Republic state of, organic county of. Otherwise, if you don't have your own jurisdiction developed, your own common law uh, overstanding of nature and what's going on, you won't be able to uh, get the system or the machine or the matrix to honor it in any way, shape or form, because they will say that ultimately in layman's terms, they'll say that you're just trying to get out of uh, obeying the law, which is a ridiculous answer, but they will. They'll, they'll try to say that it's there's some ulterior motives or something, you know, uh, uneducated like that. Now, that really takes care of the hold harmless. One thing I would say is do all of your documents exactly how you see them. Wherever you see Johnny Justice Straw Man, you're gonna change it to your name. Now one, one good way to do that, I, hopefully I'm not too late for everybody, but there are people that are gonna be coming in new. We had a few new people in the last couple of days. Uh, keep in mind, or one little trick, life hack, it's something that I do, you could do as well, is wherever you come upon the name, you know, put the arrow in front of that name and then type your name out exactly like that looks and then take the time to delete it and then move forward and do it like that. That way you're not deleting one and having to remember it, uh, that as you're doing the other, do it first, then delete it. Obviously do whatever's easiest for you, develop a system, but at the end of the day, uh, you need to do it correctly and you need to do it exactly how you see it. Everything's intentional, nothing's by chance. Um, I'm just double checking to see if there's anything else I should be going over on the hold harmless. I essentially read through the entire document, so I can probably spare you that. All right, yes, that's it. So I'm going to conclude that there, and the next one coming up, I'm going to start with the security agreement and go on down the line. I've done some things on the documents previously, obviously, for those of you who are not new. Uh, on the documents, but this time, if you can, you know, if, if it makes any difference or you can tell, I'm going to step by step cut through the documents, read over them all completely and give you an understanding of the elements of these documents. These documents are cash. I mean, it, you need to view them like money. They shouldn't get out of your sight. You shouldn't lose track of where they are. Um, you shouldn't fold them. You shouldn't destroy them. They should be perfect. They should be in a portfolio. They should be in plastic sleeves, protected, and you should be using them like the negotiable instruments that they are specifically. Now, I hope that was informative. If you have questions, I, I definitely hope that you'll ask so that I can provide any more clarity necessary. But in the meantime, stay tuned, stay sovereign, and do not consent.